Welcome everybody to our Strengths Conversation with Eddie Villa. I'm Jane Liebecker. I'm coming to you from Seattle, Washington. I am a certified coach from the Eddie Villa Coaching Program, and I do love to use the Clifton Strengths as one of my favorite tools. Absolutely wonderful. My name is Manetta Fields, joining you from Laurel, Maryland. I am so honored to say that I too I'm an Eddie Via certified coach, and I use the Gallup Strengths Assessment to help others feel, figure out how wonderful they are as well. We are so excited to have Eddie Via with us here today. Yes. You're coming Thank to you, us lady. from where today? I'm in Utah. Vineyard, Utah. So it's in between Provo and Orem. A lot of people, it's kind of a newer area. It's gorgeous. If anybody ever want to come out of Utah, come check out Vineyard. It's amazing. Nice. Should do that. So we're going to jump right into this stress conversation. Ask you, Eddie, share with us what your dominant domain is. So my dominant domain is uh, influencing and strategic thinking. So I, I have five, sorry, I will hear five influencing strengths in my top 10, three strategic thinking in my top 10. Love it. Where is strategic in your top 10, Eddie? My number one. Quite <laughs> important. My number <laughs> one thing, yeah. So for those who may not know what the strategic strength is, I'm just going to read the Gallup short description of it. And so strategic thinking strength, people strong in this theme create alternative ways to proceed. Faced with any given scenario, they can quickly spot relevant patterns and issues. I know that to be true about you, Eddie, for sure. Oh my gosh, it's it's, it's one, so it's my number one, which means it's my most, what I would call my most fun strength. Uh -huh. um, there's so many things I could just say I love about it. I don't know how, do you want me to just get right into that? Should I tell you about it? Sure. I, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so when you talk about relevant patterns and issues, I didn't realize I'd been doing this since I was very little, but I was con, I always focused on everything. I paid attention to everything. I, I collected data when, when this type of person does things this way, this is what happens. But when this type of person does things that way, something else happens. And so I became fascinated with why do, why do some people act this way and why do some people act that way? And why does it work here for this person but it doesn't work for that person? As I grew up, I just kind of like, kind of feel like what I was trying to do my whole life was find my way, find mm -hmm. my path, find my way of getting somewhere. And that's strategic. Strategic is all about getting from one place to another. We'll call it as fast as possible or with as much joy as possible with whatever, however you, uh, you know, you look at things. And so when it comes to spotting relevant patterns, I started to notice that I could sort of predict things, not always, but like predict that what would happen. Um, so like I could see a person doing something, go, oh, well, that person, if he keeps trying to do that, this is what's probably going to happen. And oftentimes it would happen. And I was just like, well, that's weird. I didn't know. You kind of like, as I got older, I started to realize that I've been paying attention to things for so long that I've, I've started to get ahead of things a little bit faster and recognizing those patterns. And for me, the patterns that I view are how people move forward, right? That's my dominant domain mm -hmm. and how people think. And so these are the patterns I'm most interested in. I'm not really a person who enjoys patterns in numbers. Like stock markets or interest rates or inflation or well, like I'm falling asleep already. Those patterns I have no interest in whatsoever. I also don't even care about like, like uh, people are shocked that I don't know anything about cars and I don't, I don't follow patterns in cars and how cars work. It's just people. It's people because I care about moving people forward and how they think. It's how people move forward and think that I'm, I love recognizing patterns. So here's where it gets goofy and I'll be, I'll, I'll end on this. It gets goofy where I can have two different conversations with two different people at the exact same time. I could be on the phone with someone having a full invested conversation. And then one of my children always, right? Dad, da, da, da. and I can go, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, okay, <laughs> yo, totally. And then, then, then this happened and this happened. Yeah. And then you go over there and you do that thing. I could do that because I'm recognizing voice patterns. I'm recognizing words, things that people are saying or not saying. And that's another really weird uh, thing about strategic is recognizing those patterns. But if I could narrow down my favorite thing about strategic is that it's my most hopeful. That no matter where I want to, where I am, or no matter where I want to be or what I want to do, my number one strength 
of strategic dictates that no matter what it is I want to do, where I want to be, there's always a way. Always. And what I mean by hopeful is all I got to do is go find it. This is my, if I could, if I can narrow all my strengths down to the most important one when it comes to hope, it would be strategic. Strategic. So Eddie, I bet it was a lot of strategic when you were reading all those strengths reports and putting patterns together and learning to teach us. Yes. I figured out that when a person has a certain number of leadership domains in their top 10, it guides their actions and it also explains why they hesitate, you know, Mm -hmm. like, and realizing, oh, if a person has three or more of these in their top 10, it, it points to a desire that has to be honored that if it's not honored, they hesitate. And when it is honored, they're more consistent. And they, excuse me, they have more joy, right? And so, oh, that's how I learned how to help people with their strengths and eventually write a book is because I just coached so many people. And I just like, this is happening over and over and over and over again. It'd be awesome to be able to kind of sit in Gallup's office someday and tell them the research that I've been doing that's helped me help other people that's complimentary, we'll say complimentary to Gallup's teaching. Not contradictory. <laughs> Complimentary. <laughs> yes, it's that. It's that's my my number one way of helping people is by listening to what they say, listening for patterns, and then asking better questions. Wow. So Eddie, um, we, we asked you this in another video, but what would you say to somebody who just is trying to think about whether they're going to take the Gallup Strength Assessment, but have not yet pushed that button? Well, I'll, I'll use it in the context of strategic. So one of the, uh, we'll call it the, um, the op, the, we'll call it, a, we'll pretend the word negative, okay? One of the word that I would use for strategic is easily distracted, right? There's a couple other strengths that are like that as well. But for me with strategic is I can get very easily distracted where if I find a path to something and then a a bright, shiny light comes in the corner of my eye and I see another possible path, I could naturally jump from this plan to another plan. And you have to know that I've always been the kind of person that like I can get on a plan, but I could easily jump off that plan and go on to another one really quickly. And if you're the kind of person that jumps from plan you never actually see the fruition of that plan after you've put putting it in for a long period of time. That's been a downfall for me. And it wasn't until I understood that my number one strategic and I understood that that's a drawback for anybody with strategic. There's a couple of other strengths that are similar like that. But once I understood that that was a drawback, it gave me permission to go, okay, I'm on a plan and I don't need to see any other great ideas or great strategies or great plans until I've really given this one some time. And now that I actually know that I have strategic and I know what could cause me to get off my plan, now I'm empowered, right? Instead of leaning in self-doubt or fear. And so what I would tell anybody is that if you take the strengths assessment, you not only understand what's great about you, but you also understand what gets you off track. And when you understand that, you become empowered. And then the best thing I would tell anybody is do this with someone. So you help each other with that process. It's a lot easier. Yes. Thank you, Eddie. Awesome. Thanks for your insight. It's amazing. And for just being the amazing, the myth, the legend, Eddie Villa. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, so much. This has been an honor. Thank you.